Wow, talk about a switcheroo the markets pulled towards the end of the day today. You out of nowhere seen this kind of large rally. This was a rally from 513 on the S&P to about 514, so about a dollar move and 10 or so minutes. That's a very aggressive move if you guys are unaware, breaking you out to a new all-time high for the S&P, but you had an equally, if not more aggressive, drop out of nowhere with no news. What's going on? Is this a leading indicator of bad data that we're going to get tomorrow morning? Well, potentially. We'll go over that here in this video, as well as Fed Bostic. He made some very interesting statements that came across the newswire earlier in the day. The comments in, you know, retrospect to this rise and fall doesn't seem like it moved the markets much, but up until this point, it was about right here when the Bostic comments came out and they did drop the markets a lot of the time before some kind of shocking information, data, change from the fed you'll get little hints of information from different fed speakers and it seems like that's what we got today if none of this makes any sense at all i'll break it down and put it into context as well as that we're going to go over all of your most important tesla stock news today as i discussed in the last video the quote unquote reason why tesla stock sold off today was because Holiday sales in China for February, now holiday, it's not really holiday, it's the Lunar New Year that is celebrated in China. That period of time in early February, there was a lot of weakness in the entire auto sector in China. Tesla's year over year sales or deliveries of Tesla's in China were down about 19% February February of 2024 but just to put this into a little bit of context byd's february sales for purely ev vehicles were down about 40 percent so in contrast to popular belief today tesla's 19 percent february drawdown seems a lot better than byd's 40 percent February drawdown that could be due to the cyber truck and the recent tour that we've seen maybe the incentives in China are actually working maybe the new model 3 the upcoming you know refreshment of the model Y maybe these things are helping to boost engagement brand awareness and ultimately deliveries for Tesla in China although you were down 19% year over year it's still much better than the competition that is again quote unquote, eating Tesla's lunch. As I explained in the last video, this was when the news came out. Tesla stock fell from about $202.60 or so down to about $198 per share. As you opened for regular trading, Tesla stock was only down about one and a half percent, which is a far cry from the seven almost seven and a half percent decline you've seen today in Tesla stock, including the move in after hours. What really happened today, why Tesla stock fell was the AI trade is reaching new levels of FOMO. Think about it like this. Nvidia's market cap has went from a couple hundred billion dollars to now over $2 trillion. Where has that money came from? It's not coming from outside of the markets. There's not hundreds of billions of dollars flowing into stocks right now. The money has went from small caps and mid caps into NVIDIA and other similar stocks. But NVIDIA is the largest market cap player here, so they're easy to pick on. But you can think of semiconductors in general in what I'm going to say next. Well, today, you really seen the selling of Tesla, Google, Apple, yes, again, your small and mid-cap stocks, but the market cap has already been so drained with small and mid-cap stocks that to get these further gains in other AI names like NVIDIA, now you're starting to see Tesla taking a bigger drop. Google down 3%. Apple down almost 3% today. Those are huge moves for multi-trillion dollar companies, and NVIDIA did very well. I mean, even with the drop that you've seen from the high, NVIDIA stock was still up 3.6%. At one point, NVIDIA was up almost 7% on the day. 
for no reason at all. No news. It's just chasing and it's just FOMO. Now, I've spoken about your AI stock catalyst that are upcoming in many videos now, but just to recap, Broadcom and Marvel earnings. If you get a rally into Thursday and after hours when they report, well, they're probably going to fall, right? If you get a decline over the next two trading days into Broadcom and Marvel earnings, I think that's more of a toss up. But at this point, if we just continue higher into Thursday, you're probably going to get some uh, drama, if you will, in the AI sector. You're probably going to get these AI stocks selling off based on Broadcom and Marvel earnings coming on Friday. It's one of those scenarios where even like NVIDIA over the past three earnings, not this last earnings, but the three prior earnings, NVIDIA stock ran up into earnings, was trading at you know all time highs into earnings and then would sell off after, even though the earnings were spectacular. Now, is Broadcom or Marvel going to have bad earnings or something negative to say? Probably not. But even if things are fantastic, if the stocks are trading at all-time highs and they've ran up a lot already, you're probably going to see a fall after earnings. That's when you could get a little bit of a reset for ARM, SMCI, NVIDIA, Broadcom, Marvel, Dell, Intel, all of your quote-unquote AI stocks right now that are popular and you could see a broadening out of our markets and more capital go into other areas of our markets. The other big catalyst is going to be next week on Tuesday, that is March 12th, and you will see the ARM lockup period. SoftBank owns 90.3% of ARM shares outstanding, so no wonder the stock's been going basically straight up since their last earnings. There's only 10% of the float that's actually trading hands and there has been a lot of demand to buy the stock because it's AI related, but SoftBank has the opportunity to sell to start selling stock on March 12th, and I'm sure they're going to do so. And even arm selling half of their half of 1% of their entire position, a very minuscule amount, that's still going to be about four and a half million shares that would be dumped onto the markets. There is no good way out for arm. Arm stock is going to fall. I'm not a financializer. I'm not a financial planner, but I think this that statement's probably going to age very well. Now, besides just your AI specific catalyst for your AI, you know, sector of the markets, I, th I think that's important, the AI sector, because without NVIDIA, without, you know, these other stocks doing so well, the markets would be not at all optimized. They would be a lot lower than where they are today. Like if NVIDIA had bad earnings for whatever reason, the S&P would probably be 5 to 10% lower. That's why I think specifically AI catalyst are important again on Thursday with Broadcom and Marvel earnings that could you know be a downside event more than likely in my personal opinion and then on March 12th that's for sure going to be a negative catalyst if SoftBank does start to sell I think the question is not is SoftBank going to sell it when is SoftBank going to sell are they going to dump you know 10 million shares roughly one percent of their position on March 12th. Are they going to dump more than that? Are they going to sell 1% or so every single day? 10 million, 10 million, 10 million, 10 million until they get to, you know, a 20 to 30% reduction in their overall position? I don't know. Maybe they sell more. Maybe they sell less. It's really hard to say because I'm not SoftBank and I just don't know. But I know that's not going to be a positive for AI stocks. But again, it could be a positive for a stock like a Tesla really broaden out our markets a little bit. Coming tomorrow morning, you're going to get ISM Services PMI. Uh, this is your headline number for services. This kind of incorporates all of your other services numbers into the headline. So last month you were at 53.4. The estimate is 52.5. So you're expecting the uh, headline ISM services PMI number to actually fall from last month. Some estimates have this at 52.9. If this comes in higher than last month's number, yeah, we're going to have big problems on our hands. Now, here's where things get a little bit interesting because you have this secondary data. So ISM services business activity, uh, the markets would like to see that fall because less business activity would likely mean less inflation. And that's actually the estimate. Last month, you were at 55.8. The estimate is 54.9. So a reduction there of almost one point. ISM services employment is uh, expected to actually fall as well from 50.5 to 50.4. A larger decline there would be, you know, seen as as positive by the markets. Here's the two that really matter. 
ISM services new orders. If new orders come in higher than 55, which was the number last month, markets are not going to like that. Uh, the estimate is 54, so you are expecting a decline there as well. This is the big one. ISM services prices. If prices go higher, that means inflation likely went higher in the service sector. Last month, you were at 64. You're expecting 63. Now, this is a chart of ISM services prices over the past 12 months. And you were trending downwards basically every month from uh, about August of 2023 until January of 2024. Look what you've seen in January last month. A huge spike. So you're expecting this will come down to 63. If this comes in higher, oh boy, the markets are going to throw up. This is the important one to watch because even think about this pretty logically, right? January CPI came in hotter than expected across the board. CPI, PPI, PCE, all of it, all of it came in higher than expected. So yeah, if if ISM services prices go higher tomorrow, that's probably going to be the biggest thing that drives the markets. Or if it comes down, that's going to likely be a very positive catalyst for Tesla, for small and mid cap stocks. Probably not so great for AI stocks because AI stocks right now are seen as kind of a defensive area to be in. If inflation does reaccelerate or the economy slows down, you know there's going to be demand in your AI stocks. If we start to get better data that shows maybe inflation is not going to be higher for longer and the Fed can start cutting rates sooner, maybe that means other areas of our markets will experience better business conditions, better growth. That puts some pressure on kind of your AI stocks just because maybe there are other places to invest your money. Now, take a look at what Fed Bostic said today. Again, back to what I said in the beginning of this video, a lot of the time before you get data that's going to spook the markets or uh, you know the Fed has to change their tone, they'll come out and they'll make some statements to try to brace the markets, if you will. It seems like that's what Fed Bostic said today. Most of the time, Fed Bostic doesn't say much, and he definitely came out a little bit on the swinging side today. Fed Bostic says, pent up exuberance in the economy is an upside risk to inflation that requires scrutiny. He also says the Fed has some time to be sure inflation returns to target. Inflation is still widespread with prices for more than the usual share of items increasing above 5%. Trimmed mean is stuck at 2.6%. So just saying inflation is still way too high. Fed Bostic says inflation is on track to slowly return to the 2% target, but it is too early to claim victory. Fed Bostic says, I need to see more progress and gain confidence on disinflation before reducing the policy interest rate. He's basically telling you here, you know, tomorrow's data is probably not going to be great. That they're going to need to see more improvement before they even thinking about, before they, before they even think about uh, lowering rates. Fed Bostic says, I still expect two quarter percentage point cuts this year. The strength of the economy and the job market means the Fed has the luxury of proceeding without urgency. And then Fed Bostic says, a soft landing is hardly assured given the level of uncertainty. So kind of summarizing what Bostic said there is inflation is too high. The Fed is in no rush to start lowering rates lowering rates, and we need to see more progress on inflation before they even think about lowering rates. Right before you get ISM services PMI, a measure of service inflation that comes out tomorrow, it doesn't seem coincidental to me. Fed Jerome Powell made it very clear. The Fed gets reports before the markets do most of the time. A day or two before, is pretty standard. Now, judging off of the rapid decline we've seen from the highs today in the S&P 500, you almost look at the comments made by Bostic a little more carefully. Like maybe he actually is giving us a warning for tomorrow's services number. I would say overall, if this number comes in hot, markets are not prepared for that. 
okay? The S&P 500 has been green 16 out of the last 18 weeks. That has not happened since 1971. And you are in the top 2% of the most aggressive rallies you have ever seen in markets, period. So 98% of other rallies in the past have not been this strong. And uh, you have not seen a 2% declining day on the S&P 500 in about 82 days. That's a long time to not have a 2% pullback in the markets in a single day. Uh, you're almost at historical, unprecedented levels of bullishness out there. But are you really? I think a lot of people are pretty defensive here. I think uh, the concentration in the markets is really the thing that is uh, pushing stocks higher. That does mean I think you are pretty vulnerable for tomorrow morning's data report. Then on Wednesday, so the day after that, you're going to get Fed Jerome Powell that will be speaking in front of the Senate. Now, this is a testimony uh, in front of the Senate, so it's not expected to be a platform in which Fed Jerome Powell gives us guidance from the Fed. The next Fed meeting is March 20th, but it's possibly slipped some things in there because he knows the markets are going to be listening and watching and waiting for anything he says. So if Powell says something like, yeah, we might not have to cut rates this year. Maybe the economy is doing just fine and no recession is coming. Those are things that the markets will pick up on and take as forward-looking guidance from the Fed. So if you're going to get something announced from Jerome Powell, via his testimony on Wednesday and Thursday, it's probably going to be on Wednesday. If that service number does come in hot tomorrow, you're probably going to get a more hawkish Jerome Powell than you otherwise would have. Then again, CPI, PPI, and PCE for the month of January just came in hotter than expected across the board, and we haven't heard from Powell yet on those numbers. Now let's get into all of your Tesla stock breaking news today. Apparently another Cybertruck has popped up for sale. Atlanta Autos is selling one with a black wrap for $237,000. Without Tesla, the US is only 3% of the way to its DC fast charger target. Nissan has cut prices of the 2024 Araya EVs by up to $6,000 to increase demand. The price now starts at $39,000 $590. And it looks like more V4 superchargers are being installed in uh, Washington, Burlington, Washington. UAW President Sean Fain is the 2024 Motor Trend Person of the Year. EV infrastructure startup Gravity Mobility has opened two dozen 500 kilowatt chargers in New York on Monday. The devices can charge at a rate of 2,400 miles of range per hour or 200 miles in five minutes. Tesla is in talks with Thailand's government for a potential production facility in the country. Having conducted a site survey last year, an official from the prime minister's office said on Monday. The first screen is going up at Tesla's drive-in theater, diner, and supercharger. This individual that put tracks on his Cybertruck just said this about Tesla, and I think it's notable, and I think you should hear it. He says, quote, When I came into this project, I thought Tesla was not going to be happy about it. I was way wrong. They have been nothing but super friendly and super supportive, which in turn made me much more of a Tesla and Cybertruck fan. I see they genuinely care about their customers. And this is specifically what he said because he says a little bit more and it's only 30 seconds, so I'll go ahead and play it. When I came into this project, I thought that Tesla was not gonna be happy about it. I thought they were gonna be super protective. They didn't want people modifying their vehicle. Turns out I was way wrong. They have been nothing but super friendly, super supportive, and insanely excited about the modifications that we've done to the Cybertruck, which in turn made me much more of a Tesla and Cybertruck fan because I see that they genuinely care about their customers and their vehicles, and they're willing to do cool stuff and they got a great captain at the helm with Elon Musk. So overall, they definitely won me over and earned a lot of my respect. Those are not words that you hear used in regards to Elon Musk or Tesla every day. Google Trends data showing healthy numbers for the entire Tesla lineup. The Model X still at 10, the Cybertruck going from 30 to 29, the Model Y going from 34 to 33, but look at the Model 3 going from 36 to 38 very strong activity around the model 3 i would argue a lot of that most of that is probably based on u.s searches and the new refresh model 3 i believe is very popular here in the u.s unfortunately we don't get numbers 
for insurance registrations, deliveries on a weekly, bi-weekly basis, like we do in other areas of the world, like Europe, like China, and you know South Korea, Japan, other markets. So we have to kind of guesstimate what demand looks like in the US, and from what I can tell, it looks pretty dang good. Tesla has recently upped their advertising efforts, now running about 3,000 different ads globally via Google. Despite Tesla's over 7% decline today, really kind of a flash crash, you can see hedge funds and institutions were very positive on Tesla's stock in the options market. You had 1,118 orders totaling $486.57 million with a positive order value of 60%. So 60% of $486 million were bullish option trades today, whether buying calls or selling puts. 40% of you know, $486.5 million were bearish positions. That's a very healthy number. When you include retail in this, volume was 63.2% to the call side and 36.8% to the put side. So almost two times as many calls were being bought today than puts, which to me sounds like a better than not idea because if the stock falls 7%, usually you do tend to see a bounce. So that's not super surprising to me, but it definitely shows people are not all that bearish, not 7% declining uh you know bearish i do think a lot of the selling we've seen today in tesla was algorithmically driven and uh quant you know fund driven selling over on stock twits sentiment for tesla is bearish at 39 message volume is high way higher than yesterday at 68 and the participation ratio continues to go higher now at 58 10-year treasury yields were up about three and a half basis points today usually not a big deal but on a day like today this definitely did not help tesla or other interest rate sensitive areas of the market markets are still only pricing in three rate cuts from the fed in 2024 over the next 48 hours or so this could change and drive the markets higher or lower via the services pmi coming out tomorrow morning or jerome powell on wednesday they could move the estimates for rate cuts. And that really happens by moving the short duration treasuries. If treasuries start to expect a lot of rate cuts, treasury yields start to fall. And that's actually what this is monitoring. This is the Fed rate monitor tool. You can find this on googleinvesting.com. But I do expect over the next couple of days, this could change. We could go from pricing in three to pricing in two or even maybe one rate cut or no rate cuts altogether, and that's an even larger problem for the markets, or we go from pricing in three rate cuts to maybe pricing in four, but we'll have to wait and see. Now, as I explained in the last video, we were in this bear flag pattern. Indeed, we did get the drop, which typically happens in these bear flag patterns. Now, question is, do we retrace all the way back to this channel line, this downtrending line of support, which could be around 165? Now, could that happen? If services come in really hot tomorrow, if Powell starts to say things like we may not get rate cuts in 2024, I could see a scenario where Tesla falls back to 165 and that's where you would probably find support. Do I think that's going to happen? I don't. I, th I think if you were to put odds in this, I always like to think of things in terms of odds and statistical probabilities. I don't think the statistical probability is over 50% that that's going to happen. I think it's maybe a 15 or 20% chance that, you know, Powell is hawkish, services come in super high tomorrow. Uh, but it's still a possibility. So yes, there could be more downside in Tesla stock, but maybe services come in lighter than expected. After all, take you back to the chart that we just showed. I mean, prices came in really high last month, so they may fall back to, let's say, 60. And that would still be the highest number besides last month that we have seen since, uh, what was this? Uh, uh, this would be February of uh, 2020. 2023 it'd still be really high but not as high as last month so there's always that potential outcome as well that services are high but just not higher than last month and that would be positive for our markets and positive for stocks i will tell you as well at one point today the russell was the outperformer 
the IWM ETF. A lot of this had to do with SMCI. SMCI is still a large component, the largest component of the Russell. It's being moved to the S&P, so that will no longer be something that will boost uh, the Russell. But for the most part of the day, the Russell was the best performing index. Maybe that's a sign you could say tomorrow's number is not going to be as bad, but I think we're just starting to get into the realms of speculation at that point. I think all of this is honestly speculation, whether or not Fed Bostic's comments today were indicating a, a bad number coming tomorrow. I don't know, but that's just how the Fed likes to operate. Let me know down below in the comment section if you think tomorrow's number is going to be a bad one and if you think stocks will fall. Now, the RSI is at 40.34. So you're under the neutral level of 50. So you're starting to get pretty negative there. And your MACD line, well, it was starting to almost go positive. You're back tilting downwards again at negative 2.17. That is all of your biggest Tesla stock news for the day today. What you need to know about Bostick's comments and the data coming out tomorrow and what happened today for Tesla as well as well, some technicals on Tesla stock. Hit that like button as well as subscribe to the channel. Let me know what you think about this information down below in the comment section. If you guys want to come trade with us live in real time, check that out. Link down below in the description of this video. We did make a ton of trades today in anticipation of tomorrow and over the next couple of weeks. Some AI trades, some earnings trades, some swing trades. Check that out. Link down below in the description of this video. You guys enjoy the rest of your day and I will see you in the next one.